but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're ready to get your day started off in God's Word. We are on the last chapter of the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4. And um, so if you remember last chapter, Ruth finally confronts Boaz, asks him, you know, hey, I am a near kinsman unto you, me and Naomi. Are you willing to redeem us? And of course, Boaz loved her. All right, he's loved her for a while now. And he's just like, yeah, of course, I would love to uh, redeem you and Naomi. But there was a slight hiccup in the whole plan. All right. So, I mean, Ruth went through all this trouble of, you know, cleaning herself up, making herself look pretty, laying down at the feet of Boaz for some reason and such. And, and, but there was a problem in that there was a nearer kinsman than Boaz to Naomi and Ruth. All right. But Boaz said, hey, let me ask him. Let me see what he thinks. If he's willing to play the part of the kinsman redeemer, I'll let him do so because he'd rather see them be redeemed than to just let them live in poverty as widows. Um, so that's where we pick up in today's chapter. Chapter four, he's sitting at the city gate. And if you guys uh, know anything about Bible history, uh, any a lot at the city gate, at the town gate, is where a lot of transactions happen. A lot of leaders gather. They, they meet people that are, are coming into the town with business and so forth. So he sits at the gate of the city waiting for this kinsman to come into Bethlehem. And he even gathers some other witnesses, some elders of the city to just kind of uh, bear witness to this transaction that could possibly happen. And he tells him, hey, when he finally comes in, hey, uh, as you recall, there is uh, Naomi of our brother Elimelech has come back to Bethlehem. And uh, there's just a little matter of his land that um, they are not able to inherit or redeem because he has passed away. And it kind of, kind of comes down to you whether or not you want to redeem that land and buy it back uh, from Israel. And what we kind of see from this other kinsman is that he's very much a, a businessman, all right? He's about, you know, making the best deal, all right? Making more money because he jumps at the opportunity to be like, oh, yeah, of course I'll redeem that land. Of course, that just means more for me. So at first, it looks bad uh, for Ruth and Boaz, all right, for all the, the Ruth and Boaz shippers out there. And he's like, oh, yeah, of course, I'll redeem uh, the land for myself. But you kind of see Boaz kind of set it that way to kind of trip him up and trick him because he's like, all right, well, if you buy back the land then you also are buying back uh the the wife of the dead husband which would be ruth and you will marry her and then therefore uh you will have her as well and at this the guy kind of you know pumps the brakes and he's like whoa wait a minute and he says a phrase here i'm going to help explain for you guys he's like why would i do that and mar my inheritance see at first when all he thought he was getting was the land he thought all right this is great this is more for me an opportunity to gather in more wealth. This is just a good business deal. But when he heard about Ruth, it all of a sudden became a bad business deal. He was like, well, no, because then any son that I raise with her is going to take that land from me because it's going to become a part of the inheritance of her husband. Not only that, uh, the son will bear uh, her husband, her first husband's name, and it will continue the line in the inheritance of Elimelech, not this kinsman. So it was a bad deal then. He's like, why would I take this land just to lose this land? He's like, you know what? I don't want to do it. Now, here's the last bizarre thing that happens in the book of Ruth for some reason to signify uh, that he is passing on the duty of the kinsman redeemer unto the next kinsman. He had to take off his shoe. I believe it was his right shoe. I may be wrong on that. But he had to take off his shoe and hand it over to Boaz or to the other kinsman, just kind of showing that, you know what, I am rejecting the responsibility of the kinsman redeemer. And actually, this is kind of a shameful thing to do, that he's not willing to uh, help out his relatives in their time of need, and he gives it unto Boaz. But in essence, this kind of shows that, hey, the transaction has been moved from this kinsman to Boaz. Boaz is now able to redeem uh, Ruth and Naomi. And this is something he definitely wants to do. And we see a lot of celebration. Uh, we see a lot of the people are very happy. A lot of praises are brought forth uh, for Boaz and for Ruth. And the chapter ends about them having a, a son that they call Obed. All right. And then we find out that Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David, King David. So Ruth and Boaz are part of the line of David. They're part of the line that eventually brings Jesus Christ to the world, the Messiah. So that other kinsman, he misses out on being part of a great inheritance, not just Elimelech's inheritance, but a greater inheritance than that, and that is bringing forth the Messiah. 
Uh, the main thing that stood out to me from this chapter is the fact that this kinsman had an opportunity to redeem Ruth and Naomi, but he simply didn't do it because it was a bad business deal. And, and more than that, he simply didn't do it because he didn't love Ruth, all right? Unlike Boaz, who didn't care if the land remained his, he, who didn't care if the children he raised with her were going to have the name of her first husband and not his own, he loved Ruth. And more than anything, he was willing to pay any price to redeem Ruth and Naomi. Once again, a great picture of Jesus Christ as well. He loved us. He loved us that, so much that he died for us. And we love him because he first loved us. That's all I got for today's chapter, guys. That's the, that's the end of the book of Ruth. If you're wondering where we're going to next, I asked one of my teens what book they would like to go to. And we're going to another short book. They said they wanted to go to the book of Jonah. So uh, come back in, for the next video, hopefully tomorrow, and we'll start the book of Jonah, another four-chapter book. And I'm believing after that, we're going to go to uh, the book of Genesis. So that's going to be a long haul there. That's 50 chapters. But hey... I'm enjoying going through these chapters with you guys. I hope you're enjoying it as well. Stay consistent. All right. If you miss a day, don't beat yourself up over it. Just get right back into it the very next day and just stay consistent in your devotionals, writing things down, telling somebody about your great God. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless.